Okay, everybody, I am honored today to be joined by Liza De Oliveira, a.k.a. Dodge, a.k.a. Echo, a.k.a. Well Lady, a.k.a. Lucas, a.k.a. Gabe. How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing great. How are you? I love all my a.k.a.s. Yeah, you got a ton. <laughs> it, it just shows, too, like how awesome this character is and it's how complicated a character of Dodge is. Now, the main thing that was I was wondering watching the show was when you were playing Dodge as an actress, are you playing it in your head as a demon or was it easier for you to like pretend that she was a real person? I definitely try to play her as a demon as grounded as possible. The one time I tried to play her as a person is in episode seven, I believe where she infiltrates the family And so I think there she really had to use her manipulative powers to, you know, the nth degree to get Tyler, to lure Tyler in. And so that's when I try to be as human as possible. But when I wasn't doing that, I definitely tried to infuse as much demon-like qualities in a grounded way that I could. See, that makes so much sense. And I think it's interesting you say, too, that, like, you did tap into that demon part, which is pretty cool. And I wonder when you talk to a lot of actors or actresses that play villains, they always usually have sympathy for their character, even though they are the villain, they see that in the person. Mm -hmm. Were you able to find sympathy for such an evil character at all? No, I didn't. I I didn't feel like I had to for Dodge because at the end of the day, she's not a human being. Mm. She's an echo. And so she's an echo who's used the identity key to be in this form. So for her, it's just about having fun in this new skin that she's wearing and getting what she wants. It does nothing else matters. She's the only one who matters. And so really, I just try to dive into that as much as possible and and have fun with it. Running off of that, is that hard to do did you find like finding from scene to scene like the motivation of her character or was it a little easier than it may not look? really not really because it was about getting the keys mm. and manipulating everybody to get the keys so if i just focused on the keys like that was my objective right so whatever i had to do to get there that's what i was thinking about the entire time so whatever i had to do she doesn't really have a moral compass so i i, I wasn't really worried about you know, what her motivation to get the key was. The important thing is that she needed them. And so I just, every scene, I think I was just thinking about keys, keys, keys. How am I going to get this? And I'll do anything it takes. And I'm not a nice person. So what does that mean, you know, to me? I love that. Uh, Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm going to say, I would compare you to, for what Johnny Depp is to Tim Burton, you are right now to Joe Hill, where you're in in the tall grass. Ah! And now you're in lock and key. Uh, do you feel an immense pressure, like getting these big roles from beloved novels and graphic novels? Like, how did you take that? I mean, I think it was just a lovely coincidence, to be honest. When I booked in the tall grass, I would say that was my first kind of big girl job. And so, you know, I read Stephen King and Joe Hill and I, I was over the moon. And then uh, Lock and Key came along and I saw that it was Joe Hill's material. And I thought, oh, well, maybe this will help me because, you know, I just did in the tall grass. And I think my team was just like, you know, we don't really know if it'll help you just go in and do the audition. And I did. And it was just and I don't even think he knew that I was reading for Dodge. It just ended up being a lovely coincidence Wow! when 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 the I think the, the showrunners had decided that, you know, I, w- I was the pick and he had seen it. It was it w- just ended up being a lovely coincidence. And not only that, Vincenzo Natale, who directed in the tall grass, directed the final two episodes of Lock and Key. So it was a, such a great reunion. Yeah. And uh, and then I ended up doing a, an audio book or an audio story for Joe Hill, Full Throttle. And I read the story called Thumbprint. And that was great. And I was like, wow, what's next? Do I get invited to Christmas dinner? Yeah. With that? <laughs> I'm just joking. But no, it's that's... such an honor. I mean, he is such a lovely, lovely human being. And I just feel so 
honor to be around him and to be able to make his source material come to life because I, I feel he's very talented. See, that's that's the smart answer. See, now she's going to cast you in everything forever now. You are. Yeah, I love you, Joe Hill. <laughs> no, exactly. Um, but he is great at what he does. Yeah. The whole that, family. Yeah, and you, you just do an awesome job bringing these characters to life. I, it's such props to you. And people from the graphic novel, fans of it, love this character of Dodge. And it's such a cool character. Now, when you go into that, is there any other like famous villains from other movies or books or shows you use to kind of like inspire your take on Dodge? You know, the funny thing about playing a woman villain, especially in sci-fi world, is that there aren't many of them. And mm. there wasn't a lot for me to pull from. That's why I was very excited that, you know, Dodge's form, especially in the first season, was primarily going to be a woman. And so when I went to, you know, find who I could watch, the only character I could kind of think of was Maleficent. Angelina mm. Jolie is Maleficent. Mm. Mm -hmm. I so that. I definitely watched that and tried to, she's really great in that um, the way she walks, you know, you could kind of see like, okay, so I have to do something with my eyes. I have to do something with how I walk or my body movements, especially if I'm wearing, you know, an epic villain outfit. So I pulled from that, but that was the only one I could kind of watch. I mean, I watch other bad guys and in, in films, but they, they didn't have that sci-fi element to it. Sure. So it was a little bit tricky. I actually just watched his dark material. Oh yeah. You, have you seen that? Oh, yes. She's great. The villain in that blew me away, but that was after I, I had shot Lock and King. Right. So I was like, oh, I wish I had seen this before because she was terrific. Yeah, that yeah, it's funny you say that because I, I just watched that too, and it was like, yeah, it's like watching both of those shows, Lock and Key and His Dark Materials. You see like these great woman villains coming out, and yeah, that's yeah. Ruth Wilson, and now you. It's like it's really, really good to yeah. see, and I, I'm sure. About, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm thinking about Ruth Wilson's performance. No, no, now. go for it. The, the thing is, is with Dodge, I think Ruth. Ruth's, Ruth's character is still very much well they're not humans but you know there isn't that demon aspect to mm. it and which is so cool because she's able to be very vulnerable and with Dodge Dodge isn't vulnerable so it's finding that sort of fine line of just being a complete garbage <laughs> being <laughs> but still trying to be likable yeah absolutely um Switching gears a bit, I was going to ask you, too, when, when we see Dodge, I think one of the most humorous takes on Dodge is that, you know, she devours food at an incredible rate. Um, are you doing this take to take? Are you really putting that much food in your mouth? Do you have to actually eat oh it? Oh, my that? gosh. Yeah, that was a hard scene to shoot. Um, <laughs> thankfully, our director, Michael Morris, gave me a spit bucket. <laughs> so I wouldn't swallow all of the food and it was actually quite hard to because it was all carbs right. and it actually wouldn't go down my throat so when they would yell cut I would spit into the bucket and there was a lovely AD who would hold the bucket for me and a lovely makeup artist who would wipe the drool off my face it was not glamorous at all and I remember shooting that scene and, and, you know, Michael asking for more, like more, more devouring, you know, this meal. And there, you know, when I drink the maple syrup, I remember the oh, first man. time I did it, as I went to do that, I thought, wow, the actress in me was like, what a great acting choice. The human being in me was like, you are an idiot. You're going to have to do this 40 <laughs> times now. And so uh, that was really funny, but it really worked. I ate a lot more than you saw too. I remember eating like eggs, and oh, it was it was. I, I couldn't eat for the rest of the of the day. That's for sure. It was a little bit gross, but I love the scene. I absolutely love it. So speaking of that too, what, was there a specific like favorite scene for you that you filmed in season one? I really love the finale. I did some really cool wire work, which I had never done before. 
So that was really fun for me. I also love episode seven when I lure Tyler in because Mm. that was one of the first times for me where I got to really act with the main cast. I mean, a lot of my scenes are with Jackson, who plays Bodie, but Mm. kids aren't allowed to work a full day. I believe they only get eight hours. I'm not quite sure. And so he would go home and, you know, I would have to do a lot of the scenes without him, just with his picture double. Oh, and so that, yeah. could be, so that would be quite challenging because you're not doing your scenes with, you know, the actual actor. So I would just have to remember what he did and then go in and, and do my coverage. And so when I go and I, I start to lure Tyler in and I start to, you know, act with the family, that was really fun because that was the first time I was getting to act with my castmates and they're all so talented. So I had a really great time feeding off their artistic energy versus just, you know, doing a scene by myself or doing it with a guest or doing it on a green screen. That's really cool too, to hear that. Like you're also mastering all these like trades of the craft having different scenarios and like you're saying with wires and green screen Mm -hmm. uh that's pretty awesome so my last question for you that i've pretty much asked everyone in the cast at this point i'm gonna ask you because people really want to know this what if there was one key that lyslo would want (laughs) in your life what would it be Mm, probably like a tidy key Oh, would, okay, a custom key. Okay, it, would, I like, like it. it would clean my house. It would pack for me. Wow. It, could it well, like wash my hair? I hate doing that. <laughs> it would do things for me. A maid key. I don't know. <laughs> I'm very lazy. No, I love that. <laughs> and practical. I mean, you can have all the magic in the world, and I would just want a key that cleans my house, which I think is hilarious. But that's where I'm at in my life, you know? That Look, I love the honesty. That's great. <laughs> Liza, is there anything else you'd want to plug besides Lock and Key at this moment? Anything we can look forward to? Yeah, I actually have a film that should be coming out this year. I don't know the dates yet, but it's a film by director Adam McGoyan and was actually at uh, in competition at the Venice Film Festival and it was a tip as well it's called Guest of Honor mm. and it's a lovely drama and I'm very 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 different in it so you should definitely tune into that when it comes out in the theaters oh that's an exciting tease okay so everyone you heard it from her yourself and obviously check out Lock and Key on Netflix we want to get a season two so any views, just keep clicking and watching and share with your friends, your family. It's a great, awesome show, and Liza absolutely crushes it as the villain of Dodge. Uh, Liza, thank you so much for joining me, and uh, I hope to talk to you again soon. Me too. Thank you so much. This was lovely.